This is going to be a very short video that introduces the concept of level streaming. Um, I specifically want to talk about level streaming as it involve, is involved in more collaborative um, workflows uh, rather than dividing your level up into different chunks. But I do want to mention that uh, in the description I have a link to uh, another uh, Unreal tutorial talk uh, where they talk about uh, using level streaming to divide a level up into different portions or sections. Um, and uh, they also mention world composition, which is another tool for much larger worlds, which you can actually see uh, if you go to the world settings of your map under the world portion, you can actually see the enable world composition uh, tool or a checkbox. And again, this is useful for extremely large maps. And I recommend you look up the documentation uh, on Unreal uh, if you're kind of interested in uh, dividing a world up into larger chunks. If you have, like, for example, like a Skyrim sized map, that kind of thing. All right, so uh, the first question is going to be what is level streaming? Well, uh, right here is a perfect example. Uh, I have, uh, I'm currently inside of just the generic. Um, First person shooter, you know, tutorial level or example level. Um, you know, I can I can shoot my boxes and see it, but uh, I've added in a level streaming volume here, uh, where if I walk outside of it, you'll notice that all of the objects in the level just vanish, uh, and if I walk back to the center again, they all come back into existence. Uh, although you'll notice that this box that I initially shot is back in its initial position, and if I do it again. You can see it happens again. And what's going on here is I've actually added into this a level streaming volume that the player starts in uh, and specifically moved all of my objects to, uh, in reality, a different level. Uh, so level streaming is where you can have more than one level loaded at a time. Uh, and so let's say you're playing a game, You like if anybody's ever played a game, uh, think Dark Souls 2 or Bioshock or any other game where you keep encountering, you know, either um, airlocks or narrow, small narrow hallways that seem to twist and turn a lot, or there's like this large door you have to slowly go through. That's where the designers are probably using a uh, level streaming volume or some kind of a like a level streaming system in order to divide the level up into more manageable chunks, because as anyone who's uh, who's spent some time making games, especially in Unreal, uh, has discovered is you eventually hit this limit where your game just has too much stuff in it. Uh, and one of the solutions some people have is to make different levels, and then you know you can travel to that level. Well, if you want one consistent, uh, entire, uh, and complete level you can divide it into smaller chunks that you load those small chunks up as you go and then you don't have loading screens and it feels like a much more fluid and complete experience. Uh, the other way you can use them, uh, and this is the way I want to talk about today, is uh, that you can use them to divide work uh, workloads up when you have a team of developers. So let's say like your job is to design the level. Uh, someone else's job is to populate it with uh, chairs and tables and you know little doodads everywhere. Another person's job is to uh, add all the lighting. And other person's you know is maybe maybe they have to add in the AI or you know specific puzzles and door locks. And it can be kind of a hassle if you're all working together and have to wait for each other to you know complete your their portion of the task. In fact, it's almost unmanageable depending on your game if you have to only work with one file at a time, especially if you have source control and somebody has it checked out. The way you can get around this is by using level streaming. So we're going to look at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this, this volume here that I have. And I'm going to reset this basically to, uh, to the initial state. So we're going we're gonna to come back and it's going to be a uh, just generic starting state. Okay, we're back. Um, so here I have, I've reloaded the map, um, and I have none of my changes here. If I go inside now, I can wander around. Everything is if it was, is if it would be when you first create a first person example map. So we are back to the defaults now. So how will we set this up for, um, 
collaboration and so we can move forward. So the first thing obviously would probably be to connect to a source control. I'm going to skip that portion for now. That you can find other other tutorials on, but you'd want to ch go to a, a uh, connect to a source control assuming that you were going to be working with other people. But let's set this level up now so that we have an additional uh, couple levels that other people could check out and begin working with simultaneously. So the first thing to do is I'm going to create this first one. I'm going to create a new level here, and I'm going to call this one objects. So object level. And it's an empty level. If we travel to it, it's completely empty. It has nothing in it. Um, we can go back to our other level. And so now that we're on this level, uh, we're going to go up to window and then levels. It's a levels tab. And this is one of those little windows that's kind of like, this is, this is where it's kind of hidden away just a little bit in a different menu system in the, in the engine. But this shows us our current level. So if our first person example map is loaded, it is the persistent level. That's what it is considered. And I can do a drop down here and I can add an existing level. So I can either create a new one or add an existing level. And so I'm going to add from my content folder my object level. I'm going to open that. And now I have my object level. You'll notice that we have, an in, we have it, it is parented to our persistent level. So this is the first step. I've now attached a new level to my persistent level. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and I'm going to change its streaming mode to always loaded. You can load these via blueprint. That's more useful when you have, for example, you're trying to make uh, a level that is like split up into pieces so that as the player progresses through it, you can load new sections of it. But for this purpose, is, for this purpose I want it to always be loaded. And so I'm going to close that. I have changed it over, and I'm going to make sure I make this current, and then I'm going to close this. And the first thing I'm going to do here now is I'm going to move all of my objects into that level. And we have a couple tools to do this. I can either right click on something and then I can say level down here and then I can move selection to current level and then it'll have moved over. Uh, and if I actually toggle now, if I go to my levels again and I toggle the visibility of my object level, you'll notice that that, that disappears because I've just toggled the visibility of this entire level off. We can also grab it uh, over here on the, on the right hand side. I can just select all of these and I can, after grabbing all of them, I can go to level, move selection to current level. And now all of them, all of the objects in the level are inside of that new level. Which means that you know, if I want to, if, if if my job is to add more objects and such, as long as this is my current level. So if if this is my current level here, I'll make this current, and I were to add in just a generic cube, and then I try to say, okay, I will toggle this on and off. You'll notice that our cube st still exists. Uh, let me delete that. If my object level is my current level, and I add in my cube, I will add it to my object level so that it now also toggles on and off with that level. What this means is that um, I can actually, so I go to my content folder here, if I were to actually check this out with source control, I can check this level out now and I can be adding objects and someone else can have the persistent level checked out. For example, they can maybe add in floors, move the, move the, the main walls here. They can do it at the exact, the exact same time. We can do this again, for example, with lighting. So if I go down to this drop-down menu and I will create a new level, and I'm just gonna make it an empty level, and I will leave it here, this is going to be lighting level. I can make, okay, so it's blue, so it's my current level. I'm just going to select all of my lighting as an example. Grab that, post-process, there we go. And I'm gonna move those to my light level. Yes. Now I probably need to rebake my lighting real quick. All right, and we're done building now. Um, I did have to uh, move one more thing over. I forgot to move my sky sphere uh, over to uh, to the current level. 
Uh, so I did that, and then I reconnected my directional light actor. Uh, so then I rebuilt. So I did forget to do that in between uh, the cuts. Uh, also, what we should do to make sure this is actually running properly is we should also switch this to always loaded. Uh, but now I have a different section that technically has all of my lighting information. So here I now have a portion that has all the objects. You can see that this was a static object, and so it's, it's well, if it were to be unloaded, we would still have its shadow, but it's always loaded, so it's not as, you know, it's not an issue in this case. Uh, but I've got lighting level now, and I have an object level now. So I technically now have three different portions of the same level that my team could be potentially working at the same time in. Uh, an additional tool, if, you know, as you're working with the team, you're kind of curious to see, is this object here, you know, where is this, what level does it live in? Rather than, you know, toggling on different, you know, levels to find out where it's living, you can actually just go to this little drop down here uh, on the world outliner, uh, and you can actually select level. And you can actually see now where everything is living. So you can see that all of these, all these walls are in the first person example level. My objects right now are all in my object level. And then I have stuff in my lighting level. So this is another good way that you can actually see what are these objects, where are they going, and, um, and make sure everything is staying you know, kind of organized. So hopefully this was a good little introduction uh, and encourages you guys to look more into using streaming levels. Uh, and again, uh, there are other tutorials out there that you can find uh, if you're looking to get um, streaming levels to work such that you can divide sections of your map up. Uh, and also there's the world composition that uh, is designed for uh, much, much larger maps and such. So have a great day.